recording. Yes. Hello, everybody. It's Dave Robles with Think Real Estate, bringing you episode 13 of the great California Corona Staycation Show. Uh, today, we're going to chat with somebody that I know a lot of parents out there are going to be very grateful is on the show today. I have with us Celeste Armstrong, who is a teacher who's going to share with us some tips on how to now become the teacher to your kid uh, at home. Celeste, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So Celeste has, uh, besides being a teacher, educator for 30 years, uh, having worked at Marshall High, my alma mater, by the way, um, she uh, is unique because you, what kind of teaching do you do now? I am a studio teacher. I teach on sets. Uh -huh. So I teach on television shows, movies, commercials, any production that has minors. And I'm, so you're working with students, not in like a typical classroom environment, but in more of a tutoring kind of one-on-one -on -one like a lot of the parents are doing right now at their homes. Yes. Okay, cool. So Celeste is gonna share with us four tips, I believe, on how to make this process of, of teaching your kid from home easier. What do you got for us, Celeste? Um, I think first, all of us need to be forgiving of each other. So just start with it's a work in progress. But mm -hmm. I think having our children at home, I have three, making sure that we have some structure is a good idea. So maybe letting your children know that they're going to focus for 45 minutes and then take a break and have a snack for 15 minutes. Maybe think of it as an hour at a time. Mm -hmm. um, typically on a set, the kids are required to have three hours. Okay. So if you think that maybe your child needs three hours of school in a day and you want to structure that for them, that might help everybody have a plan. Right. And just know it's a work in progress that we're all kind of adjusting. So. And I imagine three hours of kind of very um, kind of intense work with a kid is equal to like a seven hour school day, right? I think that the idea is that the amount of actual work can fit into three hours or less. And then there's a lot of extra activities that go into the rest of the school day. So mm -hmm. that's the thinking that they should be able to complete their work in three hours. Right. So we got number one, be forgiving. Uh, number two, have some structure, create that structure. What, what else would be another good tip? I think that it helps when kids feel validated. So if we take an interest in what they're learning and really, even if maybe we already know it, pretend that we don't and give them a chance to tell us what they're learning and teach us what they're learning. And sometimes I take a walk with my kids and I have them teach me what they learned in a certain class. Oh. And I think being a good listener and letting your child tell you about what they're learning it helps them master the subject and it also helps them feel validated like what they're doing is important. Yeah, that's great. And I guess, you know, you really learn more when you're able to um, teach or transmit or, you know, give the information that you just learned to another person. Yeah, I think it helps when there are siblings because maybe the siblings can bounce it off of each other. So sometimes in a family when there are siblings that can take some of the pressure off of the parent because you can assign one sibling to help another sibling or let even the younger siblings can learn from what another sibling is doing. So I'm fortunate enough to have more than one kid. And so even my younger kids will help my older child because they all have different skills. Right, so right, right, right. It's kind of a bartering system. You can help this child with this and then you have to help with that because each of them has different subjects that they're better at. Exactly. That's right. That's right. 
And um, okay, so I got all that. I understand you have some tricks to the trade, some games that you really like that would be beneficial if, if, this, if we had. What would they, those be? When I'm on set, I kind of reward kids with little tricks, with little games. And some of my favorites, one that I bring a lot is called Sleeping Queens. And you need at least two or three players, but it incorporates math and it's fun and it, it's a hit. So I think having little games, another one kids love is Spot It, which it needs at least two players. It's a very game. So um, having little games as a, as a break to the work is, is fun. And another one is called Rush Hour, which is by a brand called Think Fun. And mm -hmm. my games are obviously very well, but this brand, Think Fun, if you were to be looking for games, it's a really good one because it's fun and it, it really is also a learning game. Um, you said it's by Think Fun? Think Fun is the brand. Well, well, I really love that being Think Real Estate. So I think oh. it's uh, very appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they make great games. There's even little books you can buy, like I'll bring these to set because you can have your child read the story, but yeah. then there's little progressive how to draw the characters in the story. So having just little things that help um, keep your child occupied but are still educational. One more I'll just share is a book I love. It's called You Read to Me, I'll Read to You. So for your younger children who are learning to read, uh -huh. Reading this book together is also one of my favorites because it gives like the parent can read side and the child reads another and then they read together and it's short little one or two page. So for sort of beginning readers, um, I love Very this good. book. All right. So, even just in the supermarket, if you're at Vons, I'll buy like there's where they keep mag. There's these aren't crossword puzzles. They actually give you the words. They're called fill-ins. And I'll give these to kids and they have to fill the letters in the grid till they all fit. So no. I, I just come with just tons of little portable. That's things. awesome. It's kind of like a gateway game to crossword puzzles. Yes. There's these. <laughs> yeah, there's these you can buy and they and you have to get them apart and get them back together and I mean your kids could definitely get obsessed with just little things you have to be armed with yeah you do you got to be armed you got to yeah. prepare you know I mean my kids are 18 and 16 now so they're pretty self-sufficient but when they were younger I mean Jenny was armed with all sorts of stuff she'd pull out of her bag to keep the kids occupied and maybe teach them a thing or two along yeah. the way well, this we has been awesome. Read, yeah. what you got? We'll even read crayons. Like crayons just have the name of the color in three different languages. So you could just spend an hour reading the name of every single crayon color and your kids are learning if they're beginning readers. So Awesome. Well, that's, that's a bunch of good info there. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your, your tricks and tips because I know there's a lot of parents out there that are frustrated. I'm seeing it on my Facebook page, you know, parents with, with school age kids kind of on their last nerve and, and really having a tough time out there. Another last good game I know of that for family time that kids love is there's all different levels to this apples to apples. It comes as a... Oh, yes. So it comes as there's ones that are just pictures for kids who don't know how to read and then there's ones junior but there are all kinds of after they're done with their schooling there's all kinds of things that I think we all need right now yeah 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 these are some weird times okay cool thank you Celeste thank you so much for sharing your 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 ideas your uh, incredible games <laughs> and uh, you probably have some of those in your cupboard and if you don't you know, Amazon might deliver them. All right. Thanks a lot for being here. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.